is a consultant endocrinology, Magna Centers of Obesity, Diabetes and Endocrinology in Greater Noida. He's an additional director in endocrinology in JP Hospital, Noida. He is a formerly senior advisor, Indian Armed Forces, professor of medicine and endocrinology, examiner and national board of examinations, and he's got several publications to his credit. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for all those kind introduction. And good morning, uh, friends. Can I have the slides? Yeah, thank you. So uh, today morning, I'm going to speak on endocrine hypertension in pregnancy, recognition and evaluation. So coming to hypertension in pregnancy, it's a common clinical problem which uh, afflicts of all, uh, 6 to 10 percent of all pregnancies and can cause short term and long term complications both in the mother and as well as the babies. Hypertensive disorders of pregnancy can be classified as pre-existing hypertension, gestational hypertension, preeclampsia and eclampsia, pre-existing pre hypertension with eclampsia and uh, preeclampsia. <coughs> And it is, uh, how do we uh, diagnose? So any systolic blood pressure more than 140 and or diastolic more than 90, at least on two separate occasions that we call it uh, having hypertension in pregnancy. And severe hypertension is when the blood pressure is more than systolic more than 160 or diastolic more than uh, 100 uh, millimeters of mercury. And if it is less than that, it is called non-severe hypertension. So secondary hypertension of uh, uh, usually of endocrine and renal uh, origin, they account for a small minority of uh, patient, but they are very important cause. So it accounts for about 1% of all pregnancies. <coughs> so coming to the endocrine causes of hypertension in adults as well as in children. So we can see these uh, secondary causes of endocrine hypertension can be mostly of uh, and adrenal origin or they can be from thyroid disorders or insulin resistance or hyperparathyroidism or growth horm hormone deficiency in adults. Coming specifically to endocrine hypertension during pregnancy, when we use that term called endocrine hypertension, it usually uh, pertains to the uh, ad adrenal origin of, uh, uh, of hypertension. So the uh, conditions which are most common and most important are primary hyperaldosteronism, pheochromocytoma or paraganglionoma and Cushing syndrome. <coughs> so first we'll come to primary hyperaldosteronism. It's the second commonest, uh, this is the commonest cause of secondary hypertension among the general population. It is believed almost 10% of uh, all uh, uh, secondary hypertension in general is because of secondary hyper, uh, primary hyperaldosteronism. But in pregnancy, only few cases have been reported so far, maybe because of the uh, variable presentation of the disorder. It can cause uh, multiple complications, uh, fetal complications, including premature delivery, IUGR, IUD or uh, maternal including renal failure uh, pulmonary edema and the causes can be uh, aldosterone producing adenoma which we call as Kohn syndrome found in about 30 to 40 percent of, uh, of the ladies and bilateral adrenal hyperplasia which accounts for 60 to 70 percent of all primary hyperaldosteronism. Some of when them can be because of the genetic variation leading to potassium channel mutations. So the idea is when to recognize it, when should we suspect uh, primary hyperaldosteronism so in case uh, there is hy severe hypertension, there is resistant hypertension, age of onset younger than 30, of course in pregnancy, uh, it could be any time during pregnancy, malignant or accelerated hypertension, if hypertension is associated with hypokalemia and alkalosis, presence of or evidence of target organ damage and organ damage at a young age, and if uh, during evaluation we found uh, adrenal incidentaloma and hypertension. So once we see a patient with hypo hypertension and hypokalemia, there are multiple causes that come to our mind. Some of them are related to uh, renal aldosterone, uh, uh, adrenal axis, and uh, there we uh, measure the uh, aldosterone and uh, plasma renin activity. Uncommon uh, uh, causes are insulinoma and thyrotoxicosis. So coming to hypertension with hyperkalemia per se, how do we work up? So the workup starts with checking the plasma renin and uh, aldosterone levels. So if both renin and aldosterone levels are high, the causes usually pertain to the uh, renal uh, system, that is renal artery stenosis or renal uh, renin producing tumors. In that case, the patient should be referred to the nephrologist. In case there is low renin, then there can be two possibilities. Low renin causes the endocrine group of uh, uh, um, hypertension. So low renin can be, uh, can have high, uh, low aldosterone or high aldosterone. In case it is low aldosterone, the uh, things are like Cushing syndrome, CEH, etc. come to mind. 
whereas in case it is uh, low, uh, low renin with high, uh, uh, high aldosterone, then it is primary hyperaldosteronism which is the diagnosis. Uh, so in both these cases, when there is a low renin, uh, plasma renin levels, the patient should be referred to an endocrinologist for evaluation. So this slide shows us the uh, changes uh, in, uh, uh, in uh, uh, renin angiotensin aldosterone axis uh, during pregnancy. So on the left side, do we have a pointer please? So on the left side of this cartoon, we can see uh, in the non-pregnant state, the uh, kidneys, as a uh, kidneys, they sense uh, the blood volume, and in case the blood volume is low, they produce renin, which is converted to angiotensin one in the liver, and then angiotensin two in the lungs, and then angiotensin two goes to the uh, to the adrenals and stimulates the production of aldosterone, and then causes increase in serum sodium retention as well as uh, uh, fluid volume retention, which increases the blood pressure or maintains the this one. Uh, and maintains the blood pressure. Wherein in a pregnant state, it's not visible. It's not visible. I think the color. So in pregnant state, what happens is uh, the placenta makes extra uh, estrogen, and estrogen gives rise to more angiotensinogen, and also placental uh, uh, renin is there, which causes increase in, uh, in angi angiotensinogen one level. So. Uh, angiotensinogen 1 level increases that causes more angiotensinogen 2 in the in the lungs and more aldosterone production from the uh, from the adrenals so which gives rise to more fluid and more sodium retention during pregnancy <coughs> so this is the diagnostic algorithm how we proceed and this tells us that we should if there are uh, telltale signs uh, what we should do is we should do a plasma renin activity and plasma aldosterone levels and if plasma renin activity is low in presence of hyperaldosteronism, then the diagnosis of primary hyperaldosteronism is likely, and then we proceed further. This is in the no, this is in the non-pregnant state. But what happens in the pregnant state? The, sorry, the value here in the non-pregnant state is less than one nanogram per ml per hour that I uh, circled in the red. So in non-pregnant state, the value in pregnant state, it's the the suggested value is less than four nanogram per ml because per ml per hour because the uh, there is more production of plasma renin during pregnancy as we saw in the previous slide. So the, in the presence of pregnancy, in case uh, we are suspecting per primary hyperaldosteronism, we see the elevated plasma aldosterone levels uh, more, uh, with PRA less than 4 nanogram per ml that is suggestive of, uh, of uh, primary hyperaldosteronism. And <coughs> the confirmatory tests like uh, saline infusion or fluorocortinone uh, suppression test, they are rarely done in pregnancy because of their potential risks that are involved with that. Uh, for evaluation, we can do magnetic resonance imaging during second or third trimester. Adrenal venous sampling is usually not done, which we, which we do during the non-pregnant state. It is usually not done because of the exposure of uh, radiation uh, to the baby. So to, to overcome the, uh, the, uh, the uh, um, secondary or the diagnostic testing or stimulatory testing, we have come up with a back scoring system which is primary aldosteronism confirmatory testing. So various parameters are there and if we give scoring to that and in case the score comes to more than or equal to 13, it is uh, primary hyperaldosteronism. We need not do a, a confirmatory testing in this setting. And then there are, uh, if uh, a young lady is having a primary hyper, uh, uh, hypertension, and if she is suspecting uh, or suspected to have primary hyperaldosteronism, there is a diagnostic algorithm where we should go, how we should screen those. I am not uh, going there because this is preconception. So during conception, the uh, criteria I have uh, enumerated to you, those uh, stand. So what's new, what we have learned today? So progesterone is a natural and aldosterone antagonist along with primary uh, uh, dietary prostacyclines. So this is what prevents the uh, increase in blood pressure in the uh, preg pregnancy. Even though there is increase in uh, blood volume and sodium retention, but the blood pressure does not increase. That is because of the progesterone and with the dilatory cytokines that are present in the pregnancy. And if we suspect uh, primary hyperaldosteronism in pregnancy, we should do a PSCPRA, that is primary aldosterone, uh, 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 plasma aldosterone concentration, oblique plasma renin activity uh, levels, that ratio we need to do, that should be less than 4. 
uh, these days uh, direct renin uh, concentration is also utilized by most of the labs but that can be fallacious there are very confusing uh, statement because direct renin is less from the kidneys but indirect renin is more from the placental origin so there is a lot of confusion no clear cut guidelines so we sh during pregnancy we should stick to psc pra ratio for diagnosis of primary hyperaldosteronism now coming to the second entity that is uh, pheochromocytoma or paraganglionoma it is uh, a condition of catecholamine axis which results from increased secretion from adrenal uh, glands or from paraganglionoma estimated incidence is about 1 in uh, 15000 to 45000 pregnancies untreated it can have catastrophic consequences for mother as well as babies <coughs> and in the earlier uh, studies the mortality was very high to the tune of 50 percent for both uh, mother and the baby if diagnosed during uh, and if the diagnosis was before delivery with good control of blood pressure etc still the mortality used to remain very high at around 5 to 15 percent but recent uh, studies have showed that maternal survivor has uh, increased to uh, about 100 percent so it can be very well managed if we can diagnose it well and the cause of death in uh, pregnancy due to pheochromocytoma and can be acute coronary syndrome cardiomyopathies arrhythmias and stroke and shock so when should we suspect pheochromocytoma in a given uh, lady if there is family history of pheochromocytoma or familial syndromes paroxysmal hypertension that we are very well uh, aware of dizziness palpitation orthostatic hypotension if there is hypertension without ankle edema usually uh, hypertension has edema in the uh, during pregnancy but if it is without ankle edema or proteinuria then we should suspect uh, hyperaldosteronism uh, sorry uh, 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 pheochromocytoma heart failure acute coronary syndrome or cardiogenic shock it, it, if it happens during pregnancy we must uh, consider a diagnosis of pheochromocytoma multi organ dysfunction and uh, iud so a triad has been sus uh, has been suggested which is a triad of headache palpitation and sweating we remember it as tsh uh, tachycardia uh, hyper headache and uh, sweating so a, a, a triad of tsh has a have, uh, with have hypertension the probability of having pheochromocytoma is almost 85 to 90 percent biochemical evaluation is we do plasma metanephrines and 24 hours urinary metanephrine estimation either test can be used in case it is elevated the diagnosis is straightforward caveats are uh, preeclampsia can cause elevated urinary catecholamines but the uh, range is about 2.5 times higher so anything more than three times higher should uh, give us a uh, suspicion of pheochromocytoma then effects of medication with the older assays medication like levitalol which is commonly used and methyl dopa they used to interfere with the assay but with the newer technique it is not uh, the case and provocating testing that is uh, like clonidine suppression that is contraindicated in pregnancy in fact we don't do it in uh, routine also coming to the uh, imaging of this uh, ultrasound and mri abdomen without contrast they are uh, preferred ultrasound can miss smaller tumors whereas mri can pick up almost 100 to 100 percent if the tumor is more than 1.5 centimeters ct scan is contraindicated and so are the radionuclide imaging during pregnancy biopsy is contraindicated and all women who are diagnosed to have pheochromocytoma during pregnancy they should undergo genetic testing uh, uh, testing later on because there are 30 percent chances of having syndromic cause associated with these now coming to the third uh, topic that is uh, cushing syndrome it is rare because uh, excessive cortisol interferes with the uh, reproductive axis and it is an important cause of of infertility or subfertility and cushing syndrome can cause significant maternal and fetal morbidity and mortality with gestational diabetes gestational hypertension heart failure psychiatric complications infections osteoporosis fetal loss uh, preterm labor and spontaneous abortion so multiple complications can be there in a patient with cushing syndrome causes are adrenal adenoma in almost 50 percent of the cases uh, cushing's disease in 30 percent and then ectopic acth and other causes it is uh, converse to the uh, what happens in other uh, in uh, people of this or uh, age group generally it is because of cushing's disease which is of uh, pituitary origin but in uh, pregnancy the uh, adrenal adenoma is a more common cause and again this slide shows us uh, changes to hpa axis so i will not go into detail but it suffices to say that there is increase in free cortisol increase in bound cortisol and increase in cortisol binding globulin so all three uh, 
the components of cortisol uh, physiology they are increased during uh, pregnancy under the influence of uh, crh which comes from the uh, uh, from the placenta and but uh, the thing we have to remember that even though all the levels are increased the normal circadian rhythm that is there in the non pregnant state that is maintained during pregnancy so when should we suspect a, a, a lady with hypertension and pregnancy to have cushing syndrome we use specific features because the usual features like weight gain stria round face they are common during pregnancy also so specific features that pertain to diagnosis of cushing syndrome include purple or uh, uh, pinkish uh, stria not the flesh colored stria which are wider more than 1 cm proximal myopathy is there ecchymosis spontaneous bruises are there in the lady virilization poor wound healing or neuropsychiatric symptoms evaluation uh, biochemical evaluation differs in pregnancy as compared to non pregnant state so the uh, there are no specific guidelines uh, per se but dexamethasone suppression test has its own uh, caveats because of the increase in cbg and total uh, uh, total uh, cortisol levels uh, there is incomplete uh, suppression of uh, uh, of uh, Uh, of acth during uh, due to this and uh, uh, in insufficient uh, cortisol suppression because of increased uh, cortisol binding globulin and acth is also more difficult to suppress during pregnancy because of placental crh an evaluation earlier was suggested that circadian rhythm should be used because that is well maintained but that is uh, not preferred these days so what we prefer these days is a combination of two screening tests that is uh, urinary free cortisol and salivary salivary uh, cortisol that is late night so if the value of urinary free cortisol is more than four times the upper limit of normal and salivary cortisol up to two to three times above the upper limit of normal then we consider the uh, lady to be having uh, cushing syndrome for differential diagnosis uh, with whether it is acth dependent or non acth dependent we do plasma acth level in the morning normally the cutoffs are at less than 5 and more than 20 but in pregnancy we keep it as less than 5 and more than 35 so more than 35 it is acth dependent that means it is uh, likely pituitary origin less than 5 it is likely adrenal origin and between 5 to 35 it's an indeterminate we need to do further testing and the dynamic testing which are performed are high dose dexamethasone suppression test and crh stimulation test and for imaging uh, as uh, they are morely mainly acth independent so we do uh, ultrasound of the abdomen and mri of the abdomen uh, of course without contrast and if it is acth dependent then we have to do mri cella again without uh, contrast uh, bilateral inferior parietal sinus uh, sampling that is not uh, preferred because of high radiation exposure and risk of thromboembolic events so this last slide that i am going to show is uh, th this was all about evaluation but for uh, treatment part so treatment we have to treat the hypertension well and when all these uh, three entities the treatment is uh, in uh, primary aldosteronism amiloride is the drug of choice that's a um, diuretic uh, thyse diuretic which spares the potassium in cushing syndrome we use uh, specific management with metarapone which is a uh, enzyme blocker which causes less cortisol production from the adrenals and for pheochromocytoma pre surgical preparation using alpha blockade and beta blockade a thing we should uh, keep in mind is uh, labitol although it's a combination of alpha and beta blocker it's not a very good choice because it can cause rebound hypertension in patient with uh, pheochromocytoma and if possible if we diagnose it before 24 weeks of pregnancy the treatment would be surgery for all three uh, uh, entities so to conclude endocrine hypertension is an uncommon yet important group of uh, disorders causing pregnancy hypertension in pregnancy telltale features like presence of hypokalemia or triad of sweating headache palpitation or broad violaceous triad ecchymosis proximal myopathy etc it alerts the clinician towards the diagnosis of uh, endocrine hypertension diligent evaluation is required and early diagnosis and prompt management can avoid a pot potentially catastrophic event so with this i conclude my talk thank you and these are the references that i have taken thank you so much thank you dr bhuma that was indeed an excellent lecture with many learning points uh, if you have any questions we are happy to take them sir i have one question you said uh, the drug uh, if the disease is due to hypertension drug if it is due to drug resistance <coughs> if you give, even if you give full dose then also there is hypertension then you suspect but uh, my question is 
usual drugs which are given in preeclampsia, that drug, or you, you meant amyloride or uh, this other drugs, usual drug, not the specific drug. Oh, that, that time, you switch. And then the, and then. Cytoma, then uh, labitalol comes down in the order of uh, precedence. Because labitolol has a, it's a mainly a beta blocker with a mild uh, alpha blocking activity. Yeah, yeah. So what happens is here the alpha, uh, we need to block alpha receptors first in pheochromocytoma before the beta blockers. So for that we'll need a higher uh, or a more potent uh, alpha blocker which can first control the alpha receptor uh, activity and then we go for beta blockage. And this cortisol binding globulin is blunted in the third trimester. First yeah. and second trimester is sensitive, but third trimester it is blunted, then it, be it becomes difficult to diagnose in the... Yeah, so diagnosis of Cushing's is very difficult based on the dexamethasone suppression testing because of the cortisol binding globulin. Even though it is, uh, levels are elevated, though there may be some changes, but the suppression is not full. Oh. The way we want, because we are doing a suppression test, we give uh, dexamethasone from outside. But and dexamethasone is not, uh, it should be avoided during... Uh, one dose uh, doesn't matter. That's just a screening dose. We give it two milligrams at uh, uh, night. So that's not a good Thank you, sir. Thank you.